Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. Once again, we bless the Lord for this beautiful day that he has granted us. What do you want to see today? What do you want to see today? Please see it. What do you want to see today? Please say it. What do you want to see today? Believe it. What do you want to see today? Give thanks to God as if it has happened. What do you want to see today? Look, it's all in your hands. And that is part of grace. God has loved us that he gave us the most, the most precious gift. And that is Christ Jesus, his son. To be one with him, remember, so that we may reign with him. He became all that we were. And he gave us all that he is, so that now we experience all that he is on our daily basis. Who is Christ? Christ is the creator of heavens and earth. Christ is the beginning and the end. He's everything. That is what he makes you. Look, that is why the church is the, the, the house, the home of God. The church is the body of Christ. The church is the place where God dwells. The church is the strongest our community you'll find under the earth. These are people that are chosen, that are called from all over the world to stand in oneness with God, sharing the same union, nature, life, and so on and so forth. Brothers and sisters, that's why even to tell you that you can stand and speak to your day and they will listen to you, it's even an, an, under, you know, these words, it's, it's just small compared to what you're capable of doing and who you are and where God has placed you. I'm saying this to encourage you so that you may understand you're not trying to make yourself of who you're not. You are actually accepting who you were, you know. You are saying, you are answering your name. You are responding to your name. Glory! Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is an opportunity. Now, I pray for you that you may see that way. May you understand that that's who you are. And that's what has been given to you. The moment you catch it, you're good to go. And you realize you're blessed for, good, for, for life. In Jesus' mighty name. Today is another opportunity that the Lord has granted us. And we're going to be glad in this day. Well, let me show you something very important. We've been studying the word mercy, and we went in Isaiah in chapter 49, and we realized the motherhood of God is revealed in the word mercy. A mercy from the word raj rajamim, the, the Hebrew word rajamim means the womb of a woman. And the womb of a woman means the motherhood of God. God is being revealed here in another, in, in compassion as a woman, you know, who carries a child in the womb. He talked about the nursing child and the child of your womb, the son of your womb. He just wanted to show us how close the child is to the mother. And he says now, even if that is the case, the child can be forgotten by the mother who is nursing, something that is rare. But even if that happens, I am telling you, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that it is not with me. It is not true with me. I will never forget you. Will never, never, I repeat again, never forget you. So God can never forget you. Why? Because he, that's who he is. He says, that's who he is. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I want us to see some few, some other verses. There's a verse in chapter 46 of the same book, Isaiah 46, Isaiah 46, Isaiah 46, chapter 46, verse 2 to 4, verse 2 to 4. I want to read you something here, Isaiah 46, 2 to 4. All right, now, in fact, I can begin with verse 1, right? But I will major on uh, verse 2. Okay, Baal bow, bows down, Nebo stoops. Their idols were on the beasts and on the cattle. Your carriages were heavily loaded, a burden to the weary beast. They stoop 
they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but have themselves gone into captivity. All right, now verse 3. Focus on this. Listen to me, O house of Jacob. After saying what he said, he said, now listen to me, O house of, who? of Jacob. Now, when he says the house of Jacob, he's actually talking about the Jews or the Israel. So he says, listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel. All the remnant of the house of Israel. So there was this remnant of the house of Israel. And he says, who have been upheld by me from birth. This is God speaking, brothers and sisters. He was also trying to introduce the idea of mercy. So now, but he brings it in, a, in another way, but which is beautiful portrayed here. Who have been upheld by me from birth. So God was saying, look, you have to hear me. I've lifted you from birth. You've been upheld by me from birth. In other words, remember the womb, which means mercy, right? And then... He says, I've been lifting you up from, from the beginning, right? From birth. From birth, I was the one lifting you. Mercy was carrying you. Glory. Now, verse, the, the then he says, Who have been carried from the womb? Who have been carried from the womb? Who have been carried from the womb? Glory. Who have been carried from the womb? Who have been carried from the womb? So we've been carried from the womb. Now, this is the, the scripture that is also showing mercy. The word womb, remember, represents or means mercy. So he says, you people, you have to understand. I have carried you from the womb. I have uplifted you from birth. So in other words, when you were in the womb, I was the one who was carrying you. I was the one carrying you. So he's actually showing them the extent of his mercy. The extent of his mercy. That he was the one who carried them in their womb. Right? And even in their birth, he uplifted them. Verse 4. Now, even to your old age, I am he. Even to your old age, I am he. Even to your old age, I am he. And even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will hear, even I will carry. I will bear, even I will carry and will deliver you. Now, this is a word that was actually comparing to the idols and what God can do. Because the previous verses will talk about Baal. And he was saying that Baal will bow down. He uses another god and he said Nebo stoops. Right? And he says their idols were on the beasts. They used to put their idols on the beasts. And on the cattle. He's talking about idols you know, fake gods that they used to worship and thought they are gods, but they are not real. He said, these people, you know, worship these gods. And he said, you know, your carriages were heavily loaded. And he says, a burden to the weary beast. So it was those gods who are burdens, who are a burden. You know, imagine to have a God and your God is a burden to you. God who is a burden, there's no sign of mercy. Is that God? This is what he wants us to know, brothers and sisters. He says, how can God be a burden to you? The real God cannot be a burden to you and he's guaranteeing us. Guarantee us that it is not possible for God to be a burden. Because remember, we're talking about a ma the motherhood of God, the fatherhood of God, the, the mercies of God. In other words, it's revealing to them these gods have no mercy. They don't know what mercy is. And yet you used to give them sacrifices. But when it comes to mercy, I am unique. The one who knows mercy 
but not sacrifice. So people were used to give sacrifices to idols and thought this is what God wanted. God said, no, I don't love mercy. I don't love sacrifices. My desire is for you to discover mercy because the moment you discover mercy, it will cancel the system of sacrifices. The sacrifices are based on the ignorance of who I am. It's not my desire. My desire is you to discover mercy. Why mercy? Because it's what I have. It's life. It's my virtue. It's what I possess. In the moment you know it, you will know life for what it is. The Bible says, they stoop, they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but have themselves gone into captivity. Can you imagine? It's like even your gods were taken into captivity. They did not deliver you. They did not deliver themselves as well. So imagine having a God who cannot help himself and he cannot help you. He says, look at it. All these idols did not help you. In fact, you carried them and they were so heavy. And even the beasts were so, they were carrying these gods heavily. So they were lifting, they were burdened. And even you, you are burdened. These gods, fake gods, not save you. Because they're not merciful. They have no idea of what mercy is. Now he says, but me, oh glory. He says, listen to me, oh house of Jacob. Listen to me, oh house of Jacob. Now he's introducing himself. And all the remnant of the house of Israel who have been upheld by, by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb, even to your old age I am he, and even to gray hairs, I will carry you. You will not carry me. I will carry you. I will lift you up. You don't lift me up. I'm not a burden to you. I am your supporting system. I am the one who's taking you. I'm the one who's protecting you. You are like my children in my womb. That is what he said. That who have been carried from the womb. I've been carrying you from my womb. And when you were, you were, bo were born, I lifted you up. And he said I kept on carrying you even when... At the, at, look, it's actually impossible for you to, uh, to carry someone up to the gray hair. And even to gray hair, I will carry you. Normally, it's not, it's not ordinary. It's not usual to see someone carried when he's grown up. It's embarrassing. But he says, well, I'll continue to carry you. Even if you grow old, you're still my child. He says, I have, and even to gray hair, I will carry you. In other words, I never put you down. I am not your burden. I have chosen to carry you. This is mercy speaking. Well, mercy will cover us in the womb of arm in Christ. It will help us grow. Being given, birth, being given birth to a child, it means the process of growing is going to begin. Now, it means that God will have mercy upon us or covered in mercy when we are babes. He covers in mercy when we are growing. Even when you grow up, mercy continues to be our home and our country and our place and our, our city, the place where we dwell. And even when you grow, when you grow old, at the age, the one who's grown old, still mercy will carry you. He's revealing us that mercy is always there to carry us all in all ages. It cross cuts all ages. The children, those who are growing up, the grown up, the old, mercy, mercy. He looks at you and he finds that you are his child and he does not burden you, rather he carries you. You see, these idols used to burden you, but I don't burden you. I give you life, I carry you, I give you shelter, I give you a home. Discover what mercy is. Shalom, shalom. Remind you to subscribe on Church of Life Rwanda and also share with your world this blessed good news. You are blessed as you do it.